Hi parents and guardians, my name is Nikki Laverne and I am the technology facilitator here in Livingston Parish. I am also currently facilitating 6th through 8th virtual school ELA. It's come to our attention that a few parents and even students aren't quite sure how to navigate Edmentum. So we're going to do a quick walkthrough of this fictional student, Aubrey. When she logs in and she logs in via Clever, this is her homepage. Up here, you can see all active assignments and notes. Your students may have to scroll down. We've had a few students say that they're not enrolled in the current classes and they are, they just are not scrolling down. So make sure that your child is scrolling down all the way. Next, under each active course, you can get an idea of how that student is doing. How is Miss Aubrey doing in Plato seventh grade math? Not good. She's got the course grade of an F and it looks like she hasn't even done anything because the first thing she's supposed to do is that student orientation. Let's take a look at one she has been doing. English six. So she's taking some sixth grade English and again, this is a fictional student. So of course her courses aren't really matching, but you know, variety. So her current grade right now is a 60% F. And we'll take a look at why it's a 60% F. The difference between current grade and course grade, current grade is pulling up the average of all grades entered into the grade book. Only the grades entered into the grade book. So if a child has not done something, at this point it's not being held for or against them. It's just not counting. Course grade is what that person has in the entire course, and that is taking all not completed assignments as zeros. So right now on the stuff that she has done in English, she has a 60%. If she were to take all the assignments and stop working right now, her grade in the course would be a 1% F. She's got quite a bit to do. You can also see down here is off pace. Do our semester ends on the 18th. So that's when it says do. She is not on pace to complete this at the right time. So she needs to get it into gear. She's probably gonna need to do some work on the weekends or during Easter break. And you know what? That's okay. Our kids need to get their work done so that they can pass. So let's take a closer look at this. I can click on right here to continue and it will bring me into the next assignment that she needs to work on. But let's, for the sake of being a parent, let's take a look at all activities. I click here and it pulls up everything from English, sixth grade English that she has access to at this point in time. Right now, she can only see unit one stuff. Unit two will not open until after the unit one post test, which is locked because it must be proctored. And that's important. That is mandatory. So let's take a look at the top. Unit one is in progress because she's not complete. She's not finished it. The very first thing, external conflict. She's completed two out of two and she's mastered it. She got 100% on her test. Excellent job. The next one, understanding internal conflict. You see it's in progress, zero of two. Let's click on it and see what's going on. Ah, she hasn't finished her tutorial and therefore her mastery test is locked. Mastery tests are not unlocked until the tutorial has been completed. Next, she has completed it, but she has not mastered it. And we see that she's got a 20% here. And this is where that 60% grade is coming in. It's just averaging these two because that's the only two things she's got in there right now. Let's click on this and see what the problem is. Okay, she needs to retake the test and she can retake it up to three times, but it's locked. The only way a student can unlock one of these tests within the three times is to click play on the tutorial and retake the tutorial. Then it will unlock. After the third time, it is locked for good and can only be unlocked by a facilitator or a teacher of the course. If this is locked, let's pretend this is her third time. She needs to email me 
please unlock my test. I respond back, I will absolutely unlock your test, but I need you to do these things first. And it's usually supplemental material like YouTube videos or fun quizzes and games or even a poster that I want them to look at. And this has been proven with students to work. We had some fail, we sent them supplemental, and then they took the test and got 100% on the next try. So if you are con consistently not doing well, message us. We've got supplemental material ready to go. So we can see here that she also clicked here and started. She has not done this unit activity and those are hand graded. So when you do a unit activity and you turn it in, it requires a teacher to read it, enter into a rubric, and then enter the grade. So do not expect a unit activity to be graded like that. It is not computer graded, it is teacher graded, and that may take a few days because it's a lot. Post test again is locked. End of semester test. This is not being taken until the very end of the semester. It will not be unlocked until the end of the semester, and it's not until May. We did have a parent ask if they can unlock the post test. They cannot, that is like a final final exam, unit chapter test, okay? So that is gonna stay locked. So make sure your student studies. We send out study guides, we send out supplemental materials, we review with them via Zoom. There's no reason your child should not do well, especially if they have mastered these concepts ahead of time. A lot of these questions are taken directly from the guided notes. So you definitely want to make sure you're doing those. Um, how to access those guided notes. So let's go into this one where she is, working. She's going to click into the tutorial. Over here, up here at the table of contents, you can see everything that's going to be covered. Next, notes. Let's type some notes here. So very important notes right here. All right, so she's typed in some notes as she's going through the tutorial. The file folder, it has the resources. So if there was a story read, there's a link in the tutorial, but it's also here for you to go back and look at again. Guided notes, click on this, and then up comes the guided notes here. Once the guided notes come up, students can then enter the information. And Someone had asked, where do you get the answers to the guided notes? Through the entire tutorial. The tutorial basically reads this. Examples, deciding what to wear to your friend, deciding whether to blank to a new city. The answers are in the tutorials. They read it basically out loud. So you want to make sure that you have both pulled up. Under the guided notes is the dictionary. They can always look up a word. There's no need to get out of Edmentum to go to a dictionary site. Here, slide narration, it's where it reads it to you. Click to speak, you can click on sentences to hear them read aloud. It's automatically turned off, but she can turn it on if she would like to see that. Down here, there's a translation tool. You can translate to Spanish and then you put the words here. Please note that this is a kind of a Google Translate. The translation is not the best. So if you are taking a Spanish class, this translation is not going to get you a passing grade when you do your activities. So in case you're planning to do that, rethink. And then lastly, we have a highlighter. I'm all about colors. You can click, you can highlight and change things different colors. So those are all the tools that are available to the students within the tutorial. Going to save and exit. Okay, I'm going to close this one out. So you can see now I've got my progress. Also, the colors over here have changed. If it's gray, that means it's never been opened. So if you log in and you see your student has a lot of gray, they need to get on it. All right, so let's go back to that home screen and let's talk about some other things. First off, alerts over here. Any email your child get, gets is going to be in the messages. And look, there's a little orange exclamation point that says there's a new message. 
your child needs to be checking these messages daily. They also appear in the alerts because we don't want them to miss anything. Students are not reading the alerts and they're not checking their messages. This is extremely important and needs to be done every single day, preferably when they first log in and right before they get off. So let's click on messages and see what happens. Over here, you can see there's a message from me. Reminder, all unit one work due February 11th. To Aubrey, I said, get on it, because she needs to get on it. Aubrey, at any point in time, can send me a new message. Two, and look, all of the teachers automatically pop up. Start working now. I promise. So Aubrey sends that to me, and then I will have that in my email, and I will have the same little message with the little orange exclamation point. So there is easy back and forth to from students and teachers. Next, let's go back to all my work. Here, you can click on all my work and everything will pop up here. In progress, because you can narrow it down. I've been working on these, but the others haven't popped up because I have not done those. Completed, she's not finished any course. We're in the very beginning. Your child should have no course completed and then not started, that's a problem. She needs to get on that. Next, let's take a look at notes. Remember those notes we typed up in the English section? Notes are gonna pop up here. Look, ELA, OneNote, and here they are. And look, it even tells you where you wrote those. Oh, I wrote that in the Understanding Internal Conflict tutorial. Okay, great. I can edit and add more. I can print them out and use them for my mastery test. There's a lot here that you can use. Lastly, rewards. Now, because she's not a real student, she doesn't have an exact path, but anything that your child has done an exact path, any trophies they've earned or challenges they've completed are gonna show up here. And to be honest, the students have to be working in exact path. They are going to get points for being an exact path. And there are a lot of challenges that they can get on the trophy wall with. So that is an overview of what it looks like from the student perspective in Edmonton.